What's the fastest animal on Earth? Well, that depends on how you are measuring that. Comparatively speaking, there are animals like cheetahs and the peregrine falcon and stuff that can achieve crazy speeds, but consider the ghost crab. Hmm, he's a crusty boy crustacean if you're nasty, and they can travel around seven kilometers per hour. So that's not very impressive until, comparatively speaking, like we said, we compare it to its own body length. These ghost crab can travel a hundred body lengths per second. Now, if you scale that up to human size, they would be faster than cheetah. They would be faster than Usain Bolt by a long shot. They would be faster than just about every other single animal on the planet, around 500 kilometers per hour, over 300 miles per hour. That's a fast crab. Well, I mean, seriously, just look at it go. He releases it, pew, he's out of there. Woo, just look at that crab go. Hello and welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your comments, questions, and corrections on the previous episodes on this channel and address them with all the velocity and tenacity of a ghost crab. And then I tell you what's coming up next on this channel. Hint! <laughs> okay. My man. Alright. I can dig it. So can you. Shark shirt. But getting right down to it, on the last episode of Because Science, we were talking about if you could really survive a pop culture style grappling hook. More specifically, we were focusing on the video game franchise, Just Cause. I said that in pop culture and in the video game specifically, you probably do not ever want to use one of these grappling hooks. They're not outright lethal and they probably won't rip your arm off, but it's something you would probably only want to do once. They range from very uncomfortable to, oh, I'm almost dead. But what did you have to say? Our first comment comes from Batman Fan Forever 08. Batman Forever fan? Not their best work. And Will Wall, who say something like, well, what if you had an exoskeleton or a harness supporting your grappling arm? Couldn't that lessen the forces on your body and therefore you could accelerate more quickly, decelerate more quickly, and use pop culture style grappling hooks? Well, yes, if you used an exoskeleton or a full body harness, it would distribute the forces on your body a lot better. That's why if you look at something like a fall arrest harness that a construction worker might wear, these are harnesses that construction workers wear across their whole body. They connect it to maybe their chest or right uh, in the center of their back and they hook it to whatever they're working on. So if they were to fall and fall like 10 feet or so, they would be caught and the acceleration limit on those harnesses is around 12 G's and that's pretty close to all the numbers that we were calculating with the pop culture grappling hook. So yes, a full body harness or an exoskeleton would help a lot, but for some iterations of pop culture grappling hooks like Lynx Hookshot, for example, I don't think there's a whole lot you can do to save yourself. Our next comment comes from Alex K, who says, this is all assuming that the components of the grappling hook could withstand these forces, specifically the cable. Let's be super generous and give Rico's grappling hook the tensile strength of steel cable, 14,000 pounds or so. Uh, so the cable would rip apart before your arm because science. P.S. Kyle, you're a beautiful boy. Thank you. Alex, you're absolutely right. Material failure and material strength would be something else we'd have to consider for a pop culture style grappling hook because the forces that we are involving here are so great that it could start overcoming, say, the tensile strength of something like steel cable. Now, our numbers, I do not think really approach steel cable shredding numbers, but you're right. If, if you scale everything up to pure video game ridiculousness, it might not be your body that fails. It might be the steel cable that fails or the grappling device itself. Uh, you are correct. And and you're also correct. No, don't mention it twice. Our next comment comes from Den Lara, who says, I think my favorite thing about the Just Cause grappling hook is the impossible physics in doing a free fall from a jet, no parachute, then grappling to the ground and pulling yourself down even faster to land safely, uh, because grappling hook. You're right, that would be even more ridiculous. If you are falling and then you grapple to the ground to accelerate yourself towards the ground even more quickly, you are subjecting yourself to even more eyeballs up acceleration, which you have the least amount of tolerance to. Uh, them's games crazy. <laughs> yeah, don't do that to yourself, Rico. That's just poor planning. Our next comment comes from Ginger Shane, who says, you talked about human body limits in experiencing G-forces in directions, like up, down, in and out, but you didn't talk about sideways. Is it different? So in the episode, we were going through what your body can handle if your eyeballs feel like they're going out or in or 
down <laughs> or up. And um, those are the most studied directions in terms of G-force tolerance. Now, if I go back to the source that I was looking at, which you can find in the show notes of the original episode, it is a report from the military. I don't think they're watching me. Probably, but it's a report from the military who says this about eyeballs left and right. Of the three major body axes, least research has been done in the lateral GY direction. Limits are vague and realistic human tolerance data is at best a conjecture. So it just happens to be that eyeballs left and right is the least studied directions for G-force tolerance. So uh, it is probably different. How different? Who can say? The military, eventually. Our next comment comes from Incredible Canemian, who says, So basically, the Adam West version of grappling up a building would be the most practical out of all incarnations of Batman. Yes, he would be. Uh, as many of you pointed out, Batman very gingerly uses grappling hooks in comparison to all the other pop culture grappling hooks, and he's probably the safest grappling hook user. Now, there's some practical constraints here. A lot of Batman uh, iterations have been live action with real actors, and if a real actor is going to use a real grappling hook, you can't exactly accelerate up a building as fast as possible because, you know, you'd kill the actors and, you know, Christian Bale never accelerates faster than 2G. It's in his contract. Look it up. So Batman is actually the safest grappling hook user. You can look at the movies, the games, uh, the animated series, and it's all pretty much just uh, like that speed. Pretty easy, which is very survivable. So yes, Adam West, again, the best. But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to Mickey K1, who's actually answering another commenter, which I love. One commenter, Tony Marinilli, says, Hey Kyle, great video as always. Thank you! But I'm curious if Rico's world has a different gravitational constraint. And then Mickey K1 says, Just spawn a vehicle on top of a building or something else, and then let that car fall and time it. And then using the free fall equations, uh, you can get the exact comparison to the acceleration due to gravity on Earth's surface, which is 9.1 meters per second per second. Happy physicsing, Mickey K1 says. I love that. I love when you help each other out. I can't, I can't read every comment. I can't respond to everything. Mickey K1 for helping us determine how you would get the real acceleration in Rico's world. Answering Tony here, you are indeed a super nerd. Ha! Oh, that's webbing. This is grappling hook. This is, this is webbing. Grab? Wab. Grab? Wab. Oh man, I had way too much caffeine. But of course, I'm not always right, so what did I get wrong in the grappling hook episode? Our first correction comes from Mechanical Chaos, who says, in theory, referencing that I said that if you fired a bullet from the same height that you dropped a bullet, they would both hit the ground at the exact same time. Mechanical Chaos says, in theory, uh, no. Mythbusters did the fired bullet drop test, and they got perfect timing, and in reality, a bullet fired does hit the ground at the same time as a bullet dropped. Look, I said in theory because practically this is very hard to test. Even though the Mythbusters did do this episode, the timing isn't exactly correct, right? It's not the same num exact same number of milliseconds in their test. Practically, it is very hard to test, but theoretically it is accurate, which is why I said theoretically. And, you know, w what would I know about Mythbusters? No, I know. I know they did the test. I... I'm involved. Our next correction comes from Oki Oak, who says, less than a second, Kyle, for travel distance and stuff in Rico's calculations? That's not a number. The actual number is between 0.86 seconds and 0.89 seconds. What number was chosen here and why? Yes, I did not give a specific number uh, so you could do the calculation yourself, and I gave a range below one second I didn't specify, because being very specific depends on the video you are looking at, what the playback speed is, uh, depends on uh, if you're looking at it on YouTube or Vimeo or some other place or actually measuring it in game. There's different accelerations in the game for different distances, and it's hard to tell when Rico is accelerating and when he stops accelerating. I'm just approximating from the video and going 
going frame by frame, so it's hard to tell uh, the exact value, which is why I chose sub one second. But look at your values. You said it's somewhere between 0.87 and 0.89. The difference in our conclusion there that that would make is very, very small, just a very small percentage. So I think even though we are not being specific, we're still okay. We cannot always be specific. We can get a range of values and still have a ballpark idea of what we're dealing with. Our next correction comes from Arvind Gutumukala. Sorry, who says, just a small correction, when calculating the acceleration that Rico experiences, you use his average velocity as his maximum velocity, but that is only the case when he doesn't accelerate to get to his average velocity. If you assume that he starts at zero and accelerates for 0.88 seconds based on your calculations, his maximum velocity is rather 53 meters per second, not 45, and he experiences more force, 5,000 newtons, which is significantly larger. Thank you, thank you for getting my brain thinking early in the, in the day. <sighs> Look, Arvind. You got me. I'm not being as specific as possible here. We are very much oversimplifying the situation. What you would want to do, which I think you are doing, is use the full kinematic equations of motion and get when he's accelerating, when he stops accelerating, what is his maximum velocity, what is his average velocity. You can do all that, and I also did that calculation. But for our short 10 minute video, that's a lot of math to go into, and so I didn't. And the difference between values, you mentioned 5,000, and our values uh, for the other calculations that I did is less than 25%. So it still doesn't change our conclusions, though the actual values would be different. That's why I simplified and did not do everything that you said. But you are correct. But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to Rono the first of his name and last of his kind, keeper of the skull and tamer of the lion, who says that's just the pull effect. Chances are the launch of the hook itself would easily, if attached to the arm, shatter your arm and collarbone as well as dislocate your shoulder, which, spelled as the cackling kind, which supports it being made out of a heavy duty metal. Now, I really like this correction, but not the grammar, because it points out something that we have been ignoring. Not only would the grappling hook have to pull you along at some ridiculous force and acceleration and velocity, not only would you need something like a full body harness or an exoskeleton to help you, but just being able to fire a grappling hook 800 meters or a kilometer and then pull you all the way in would require uh, such a launching capacity that the equal and opposite forces that we know from Isaac Newton, just to launch something that far would put a recoil on your arm worse than any shotgun or elephant gun. It would be like firing a missile from your arm, which would shatter your arm and your shoulder, uh, just like Rono the first of his name said before it's even pulling you and subjecting to those forces that we say are so dangerous. So for all of that, making us think about all that, Rono, you are indeed a super nerd. Ha! The sigil of the first. Now, if you are already subscribed to Alpha, which you can do at projectalpha.com, you already know what the next episode of Because Science is going to be because you already saw it. And you got other premium content from myself, Nerdist and Geek and Sundry. Ho oh, ho, and discounts on merchandise. There's none here. Merchandise, just like that. But if you haven't subscribed to Alpha just yet, the next episode of Because Science, <laughs> okay, is my man. How does Aquaman survive underneath the ocean? That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, we are speculating on what kind of adaptations that Aquaman would need from his Atlantean genetics to survive being a humanoid beneath the waves. So go watch the latest episode all about pop culture grappling hooks if you haven't yet, and leave me all of your nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, oh, just look at them, and at because science on Instagram and Twitter. That's where I'll be taking all that stuff for this part of the show. And don't forget, flammable and inflammable mean the same thing. Don't confuse them, or else you'll be lit in the bad way.